Okay, uh, let's get started, please. Um, if you're on the live stream, I hope you can hear me. Um, I can't connect to the live stream from my computer here, so I don't know if it's working. Um, I guess if you can't hear me, then, well, you're not hearing this message anyway. Um, so today's topic is, well, the beginning of today's topic is uh, moving, copying, uh, renaming files. Uh, sorry, moving, removing, moving, removing, and copying files, right. Uh, and then we're going to start talking about shell scripting. Uh, now, before I start talking about uh, today's, uh, the content on today's slides, uh, I have to warn you that the commands I'm showing you now uh, will overwrite any of the files that you have. Uh, so you have to be careful about using these, right? When you move uh, or when you rename or move or delete a file, uh, you have to be aware of the fact that you could be permanently removing a file or permanently overwriting an existing file that you may not want to overwrite. Okay, so you have to be a little bit careful when you use these commands. Right, with great power comes great responsibility. Okay, so the move command moves or renames files, right? Um, so if I create a file called somefile.txt, then I can move uh, that file, right, onto renamed file.txt, right? So you just specify the file you want to, um, you, to rename a file, you specify the file you want to be renamed and its new name, right? So that looks pretty easy to do. Right now, uh, in my, yeah, this is my home directory. It's a mess. I'm going to clear it out um, uh, for you shortly. Uh, but we have some file called some file, right? So I'm just going to make it quickly. Right? And you can see over here, there's some file. I'm now going to move it. So you just do move, SOM, tab, right? And I'm going to call it uh, renamed, Whoop, zip, ba -da, ba -da, like that, right? And then you do ls again, and there, right? There's renamed, and some file is now gone, right? Because some file has been renamed to renamed.txt. Uh, so uh, now there is a way to uh, make sure. So if now here's the problem. The problem is if renamed.txt exists when I run the command, then move will overwrite the file um, renamed.txt, right? So it will overwrite an existing file. Right? You can always force it to re overwrite an existing file with minus F. Right? Don't do that unless you're really sure that's what you want to do. If you want to be sure, run a uh, move in interactive mode, so minus I. Right? Right, so I have a file called renamed.txt. Right? Um, let's make some file again. Right, so if I run move in interactive, sorry, in interactive mode, so I'm going to move some file to renamed, right? Now move will prompt, right? Do you really want to overwrite that thing, yes or no, right? And then it's just Y or N. I'm going to hit N, and it won't overwrite it, OK? Um, so many, uh, many Linux systems that are set up for educational purposes, right? So any university, well, not any, many universities that use Linux for their undergraduate teaching, uh, they will actually change the MV command to always run in interactive mode. Right, in order to prevent this sort of uh, overwriting of files. Okay, so just be aware of that. Um, you can move a file to a new file, right? So you can rename a file, or you can move a file to an existing directory, right? So I can take some file.txt and move some file.txt to another directory, right? So here uh, I've got some file.txt. I'm going to make a directory called some dir, and then I'm going to move that file into that directory, right? So let's see that. Okay, so I have some file. Uh, I need a some dir, so I'm going to make a directory called some dir. Right, and then I'm just going to move some file into some dir. Right, like that. I look in the current directory. Some file is gone. Right, I look in some dir, and there's some file dot text. Right, so it just moves it. Now, if you want to touch. Uh, some file. So I'm going to do the same thing, but this time, instead of moving into some dir and keeping the same file name, I'm going to give it a different file name, uh, different name dot text. Right. Uh, sorry, that's not right. Move some file to some dir and then give it a name. Right. So I can rename it and move it at the same time. Right. Look in some dir, and there's uh, diff name dot text. Right. So that's it. 
it's not the uh, you know it's not the most exciting command. Do, do, uh, move some file one uh, do, do, to move a file right. Okay, and then you can actually move multiple files into a directory at the same time, right? So here I've got two files, right? Some file one, some file two, right? You can move both of them into the same directory in one line, right? So as long as the last argument is a directory name, everything else in front of it will be moved into that directory. Okay, so that's uh, move, right? So move or rename. Uh, RM removes, right? Um, use it in a similar way, right? So it, for RM, you just specify the files that you want to remove, right? So here's three files again, right? Some file, some file one, some file two. I'm going to remove some file.txt. If you do that, it's gone. It'll disappear. Right? If you want to, you can remove more than one file at the same time. Right? So you can uh, specify multiple files to remove. Uh, this means you can also use the wildcard to remove stuff. Right? So back here, now notice my home directory is a mess. Right? It's got all sorts of files that I probably don't want. Right? So if I want to, I can remove one file at a time. So let's remove error.txt, right? ls. It's gone, right? Let's remove everything that begins with file, right? So remove files, oops, so file star, right? Oh, these are, I changed these to, um, these are write protected because I did that last class, right? So if you try to remove a write protected file, it asks you. Uh, and unfortunately, it's going to ask me 10 times, I think. So, you, oh, no, just the one, good. LS, everything called file, everything beginning with file is gone. Right, what else do I want to get rid of? I want to get rid of all the text files now. So remove star text, txt, like that. Right, and my home directory is now looking a lot cleaner. Right, right. so the, uh, so the path name expansion works as well with this command. Right, uh, but again, remove will really remove, right? So as far as the, uh, the way Linux or in Unix works is it believes that whoever's typing in the command knows what they're doing. Right? So if you don't specify minus i, it will simply remove whatever you uh, tell it to. Right? If you want to be sure, right, if you want to pick which files to remove, make sure to go interactive. Right? And then y or n to uh, confirm or deny whether or not to remove the file. Right? Now, you want to remove, often you'll want to remove directories and all of their contents at the same time. Right? Uh, so to do that, you tell remove to recursively remove the directory and all of its content, all of its contents. Right? This is one of the um, this is one of the common uses of recursion um, uh, in in Linux. Right? So when you recursively do something to a directory uh, and all of its contents. Right? So you just use minus r, and minus r will nuke some dir and all of its contents. Uh, what did I do here? Do, do, do. Why are these here? Oh, I see. Um, okay, right. So let's do that. Uh, ls. So what's in some dir right now? So there are some files, right? There's some files in some dir. So if I just do remove some dir like that, remove will complain, right? It says, hey, I can't remove a directory if it's got stuff in it, right? You can make it stop complaining by doing minus r. And now sum dir is gone. Right. Uh, now let me make sum dir again. OK, so sum dir is back. But sum dir is empty. Right. So nothing in it. So if you want to remove an empty directory, you can use remove dir. And that will remove an empty directory. Right. Uh, and sum dir is now gone. OK, uh, sum, uh, I don't think remove dir will remove uh, a directory if something's in it. Uh, so man, uh, yeah, remove the directory if it's empty. Okay. Okay. Now to copy a file. Uh, now copying a file um, makes a copy of the file, right? That's what ex exactly what it does, right? So it copies it, uh, but you have to specify the name of the file that you want to copy, and then you specify the name of the file that you want to create. So here, I've got a file called sumfile.txt. I'm going to copy the contents of that file um, into a second file called copied file. Right? 
And to make that a little more interesting than that example, right? Uh, touch some file. Right? And then I'm going to put something in it. Oh, you know what? Why don't we do this way? Uh, no, I'm just going to do this way. Right? I'm going to insert some text. Hey, this is some um, text. And save that. Oh, sorry. One more time. OK. So if I, right? So some file actually has something in it. Right? So it's not an empty file. So now I want to copy it. So copy some file. Uh, another file. Right? And you see there's some file and another file. And if you look at their sizes, uh, they're the same. They're both four. Right? Um, and if you look at their contents, right, they're identical. Okay? So you can make a copy of the file. You don't have to copy the file into the current directory. Right? You can copy it into another directory if you want to. Right? So make dir sum dir, copy some file into sum dir. Right? And if I look in sum dir now, right, there's some file again. Right? And of course, if you want to, you can give it a new name when you copy it. Right? So copy some file into sum dir as another file. Right? And when you look in sum dir, you'll see that, um, sorry, sum dir. There we go. Right? You'll see that there is another file.txt too. Right? Uh, now, the thing you have to, the, what you have to watch out for is that um, copy will overwrite an existing file. All right? So what's inside another file? It's, hey, this is some text. So let me uh, edit right? this. Hey, this is more text. Boop, boop, like that. Right? So let's look at some file. All right, so now the two files are different, right? If I copy some file onto another file, uh, another file has been overwritten. Right? So copy will also destroy existing files. Right? Again, you can use the minus i uh, option to go into interactive mode. Right? So prompt before overwriting. Okay? So be very careful when you use these commands on your own systems. Right? And whatever you do, do not go into the root directory and type remove minus r star. Right? That will nuke your entire operating system. Okay? Do not. No. Well, I mean, it's your computer. You can do whatever you want with it. Right? But do not do that. Uh, you won't be allowed to do that. If you're in Cast Lab, you can't do it anyway. Right? Because uh, you don't have write permission on any of those directories. Right? So be very careful with these commands. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So if you have uh, if you have super user permissions, right? So if you're in a, if you are a system administrator on a Linux system and you write rm minus, you go into the root directory and do rm minus r star, you will delete all of your all the files in your operating system. And whether your operating system still runs is a whole other question, right? What happens then? I don't know. I've never done it, but. You've got it on your computer. You can try it and see what happens. <laughs> right? I mean, it's easy to do if you're using a, the subsystem for Linux, right? Uh, well, you probably shouldn't do it because your subsystem actually mounts a bunch of your Windows files. So yeah, don't do that. Um, but yeah, I, it's something that uh, is probably worth trying. So if you got, uh, yeah, if you got a spare computer somewhere that you don't mind installing, installing Linux on, give it a shot. See what happens. I actually don't know what happens. Uh, I do know that it has happened before. So there are lots of stories from system administrators that say they've nuked um, entire parts of their operating system. OK. Uh, now, if you want to copy a directory, so sometimes you want to copy the entire contents of a directory. right? To do that, you also have to use the minus R flag. Right? So you must do the copy recursively. Right? Copy the directory and recursively copy all of its contents. Right? And so what does that mean? It will go into the directory, find any files, copy, it, copy those. Right? And then look for any directories, go into those directories and copy those, right? and so on and so on and so on. OK, so uh, CPRMMV, right? Uh, essential, they are essential commands right? when you're working on your file system, um, but they have the potential to do great damage. Right? So be, be careful when you're using them. 
right? Especially when you're new to uh, Linux, right? Uh, so when I first started using Linux, um, uh, the system administrators had changed the command so that they would always be interactive. Uh, I changed them back so that they wouldn't be interactive um, and then ended up deleting a bunch of my assignment files. So don't do that, right? Because then you have to send an email to your system administrator asking for the backups. Uh, and they ask you why it happened and you say, well, because I didn't use it in interactive mode. Okay, so, um, right, scripting, right? So we're now at the point where we've learned a bunch of commands uh, and now we actually want to do, write some simple programs, right? And that's all that a shell script is, right? So a shell script, you can think of it as being almost like a Python script, right? It's just a plain text file. It contains a sequence of commands, right? Uh, a sequence of commands that the bash shell can interpret, right? So what happens when you quote unquote run a script? Well, the shell reads the file, right? And interprets the file one line at a time, right? And runs the commands line by line, right? So in that sense, it's exactly like Python, right? So your shell is a command line interface, right? So you know that you can type into your shell, press enter, something happens, right? But it's also an interpreter, right? So in other words, you can feed it a file that contains a bunch of commands and it will interpret those commands. Okay, to run a script, it has to be readable, right? So the user that's trying to run the script must have read permission on the script, and they must have execute permission on the script, right? So it's not enough that the file be readable. It also has to be executable. Second, the system needs to know where the script is located, or the caller, the user, has to tell the system where it's located, right? One of the two. And then uh, we've got some style rules here, right? So when you name your script, um, so there's no hard and fast rules, right, in Bash. Um, you'll, see name, you'll see all sorts of strange naming conventions. Um, what would be nice in this course is if you named your script starting with a lowercase letter, right? Uh, your script should only contain alpha numeric characters and the underscore, right? So letters, numbers, underscore. If you want to, right, if you have a multi-name, multi-word script, you can use the underscore to separate the words if you want to. Or you can just mash them all together, I don't care, right? Um, but you generally should avoid camel case, right? So it's not Java, right? Don't use camel case. Um, you should generally avoid capital letters at the beginning of the script. Um, and other than that, uh, you can name it whatever, however you like. Uh, also, your shell script, it's not on the slide, uh, should end in the extension .sh, right? But you'll see that in a second. So there is your traditional hello world in bash, right? So the way you, the way you create this file is you create a text file, right? So um, hopefully you've all got a text editor that's running now. Um, if you're in Windows using the Linux subsystem, you can hook up Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio Code um, to your Linux uh, system, right? Which is kind of nice, because uh, now you can use a graphical editor. Uh, if you're on Mac, just pick any text editor that you want, it'll be fine. Uh, if you pick one that is a programming text editor, it should be aware of the bash syntax, right? So you'll get this nice syntax highlighting. Uh, so you need to create this file. So let's do that. No, I'm on Windows. I know, like, I don't have a Mac laptop, so I can't do the Mac sort of thing here for all of you, um, which is a little unfortunate, but that's just the way it is, right? So I want to create this file, right? Uh, it's the uh, hashtag exclamation mark slash bin slash bash. I'll explain what that means in a second. Echo, that's just the echo command, right? So echo echoes or prints to standard output whatever you tell it to, right? I've got hello world in single quotes, right? Remember what single quotes does, right? It suppresses all expansions. So I'm really going to get the string hello comma space world, right? Uh, you save it, so I've already got it saved. So where do I have it saved? I have it saved in my home directory, right? That's good. So in my home directory, let's see what happens. I just wanna check what permissions I have on that file. Hello, okay. So you can see here I've got read, write, and execute permission on hello.shell, that's what I need, right? Now, if you just save the file, what's gonna happen is, uh, Okay, so when you save the when you save the um, that file using your editor, um, it's not going to save with the execute 
uh, permission turned on. Right? So when you save your shell script, the next thing you have to remember to do is to set the permission. So change mod uh, plus, uh, oops, sorry, u plus x, hello shell. Right? So for the user, turn on execute permission. Right? And now I can run the program. So if I type in hello shell, oh, it doesn't work. Right? Even though I'm in the current directory. Right? So even though I'm in my home directory with that shell file, with that file, right? the uh, shell, bash doesn't know where to find that file. So I have to tell it where to find that file. So where is it? It's in, the ho it's in this directory. So dot slash hello.shell. And now it runs. Right? And there's hello world in bash. Right? It's a two-line program. Okay. So I have to tell it where this shell command is. Uh, sorry, where this command lives. OK, now why did I have to do that? Right? Again, because the shell needs to know where to find this file called hello.shell. Right? Dot slash hello.sh means look in the current working directory for that command. Right? Now, obviously, if hello.sh is not in the current working directory, you're going to get an error, right? So if you're in some other directory and you write dot slash hello sh, right? If there's no hello sh in that directory, it's not going to work. Uh, this is a little inconvenient, right? It would be nice to be able to put your um, shell scripts somewhere, like in one place or in a few places, right? And have, uh, and be able to just write hello dot sh, right? Uh, there is a way to do that. So Linux, searches for a list of directories, uh, searches a list of uh, directories for executable files, right? And that list is stored in this thing called big P path, right? All caps path. So let's take a look at what path is. Right. Now, on your system, you're going to get a different path than mine, right? Especially if you're on Mac. Uh, so I can echo path, right? So this is, remember, this is parameter substitution. Right, dollar brace name of the variable, right, and you get that. Okay, so it's a colon separated list, right, of directories. Right? So home slash home slash Burton slash bin is the first directory. The second directory is slash user slash local slash uh, sbin. Third directory is slash user slash local slash bin, and so on, and so on, and so on. Right? There's a lot of directories in the path. Uh, so the way, uh, so when you type in a command, the uh, bash will look through this list of directories starting from the first one for a command that matches uh, the, for a command whose name matches the one that you typed in. Right? So the first place bash will look is in home slash home slash Burton slash bin. Right? If there's a, if I put hello.sh into, into that directory, uh, then I don't have to write dot slash whatever, or I don't have to write the path name slash hello dot shell. Right? And you can see there's a lot of uh, directories in the path, right? which is not unusual. So let's give that a shot. Oh, wait, sorry. Here? OK, so print working directory. I'm in my home directory. Right? You can see I've got a bin directory here. Right? My bin directory is on the path. So if I move hello.shell into the bin directory, right? ls, it's not here anymore. I can just write hello.shell, and it still works. Right? So that's how you, uh, if you, you can set up a few directories um, where you want to put your sys220 scripts and just plunk them in that directory, add those directories to your path, and uh, you don't have to type in the full path name of the uh, file anymore, of the command anymore. So how do you go about doing that? Right? Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. Right? So if you're working on an assignment and you don't mind at the beginning, uh, when you start to work on the assignment every time you open it up again, right? if you don't mind typing this sort of thing in, you can type that sort of thing in into your shell. Right? So you can temporarily update the path by using what's the export command. Right? So how do you read this? Right? So the export command takes in an uh, environment variable, in this case, the one called path. Right? And I'm going to set path to be equal to the current path. Right? So dollar braces path, right? that's parameter substitution. So that's the current path, colon, 
right? My home directory is sys220 slash bin, right? And that will add uh, the directory sys220 slash bin to my current path. Now you have to type that in every time you start a new shell, if you do it this way, uh, which isn't bad if you're, it's not that inconvenient actually. If you, so if you are working on say assignment two, and you have an assignment two directory and you want to put your shell scripts into that directory, you can just type this in uh, before you start uh, working on your files. Right? Now, if you want to permanently update things, um, for most of you, you'll have to create this file here called .bash profile in your home directory. Right? Uh, so that includes the line, well, the one I just showed you. Right? Uh, so let's do that. Because uh, that probably will be useful for you. Right, so where am I? I'm in the home directory, that's great. Uh, ls minus al, I wanna see if I have a bash profile already. I do not. I've got a history file, right? That records the history of commands. Uh, I'm not sure what logout is. Uh, bash rc is another, so you'll often see people uh, suggest you update your path in bash rc. Um, you're generally not supposed to do that. If you want to update any environment variables, you should do it in uh, bash profile, right? But you can see I don't have a bash profile file, so I'm gonna have to make one. Uh, so I'm gonna do it through code. So bash profile. And here we go, right? And I wanna do uh, path equals, sorry, let me get rid of this. Uh, are you sure? No, I don't wanna do that. Oh, that's better. Okay, there you go. Bat path equals, so the current path, followed by, sorry. Mm, so what I write, I wrote twiddle slash sys220 slash bin. Save that. Right, so save it as dot bash profile. Uh, okay. Right, and so now that's saved. Okay, so if I go into this version of bash, right, uh, I will not get an updated path. So it's not there, right? Uh, but when you open up a new version of Bash, right, it will get the updated um, path, right? So if I open up, um, so for me to open this up, I just open up a new Ubuntu instance, right? And then I do echo dollar path, right? You'll see there it is at the end, right? It's added uh, that directory to my path, right? So now whenever I plunk my shell scripts into that directory, uh, they will run uh, without me having to tell them where they are, uh, without me having to tell bash where those files are. Yep. The whole code uh, being by default, so if you didn't have it set up, it would be able to open it like Oh, so uh, you won't be able to open it from Linux. It'll, uh, you'll have to open it up through Windows. Uh, so if you want to hook it up to Linux, your Windows uh, subsystem for Linux, uh, there's instructions, um, there's a plugin you have to download for code. Right? It's super handy because otherwise you're stuck trying to do things on the command line. Uh, and I haven't really shown you how to edit stuff on the command line. And you don't want to know, to be honest. <laughs> to be honest right? uh, if you're really interested in it, you can look it up. But um, for the purposes of this course, um, I don't want to inflict that on you. Uh, wrong presentation. Okay. Oh, still the wrong. Where am I? Here. Okay, good. Okay, now, so with the exception of the first line of the script, anything that starts with the, as soon as you write the uh, hashtag or the pound character, that starts a comment, All right? So that's a comment. Oh, hang on, what am I doing? Uh, that's the, that starts the line of a comment. That starts a comment. Um, the comments are similar to Python and Java comments, right? That the line ending comment, right? Uh, so you can also write a comment at the end of a line, right? And that terminates the line. Right. Comments are just ignored by the bash interpreter. Right. The first line is special. Okay, so the first line is special. So that's not a comment, actually. That first line starts with uh, pound and then, or hashtag uh, exclamation mark. Uh, that has the name, what do they call it? Uh, it's, uh, so the, the traditional name is shebang. Um, I don't know why it got that name, but that's just its traditional name. Um, it's called some other things too, and I can't remember what they are. If you Google, if you look it up on Wikipedia though, the Wikipedia page is Shebang. 
all that thing, all that does is it tells the kernel what interpreter should the kernel use to interpret the rest of the script, right? So slash bin slash bash, that's just the bash interpreter, right? Uh, so this will use, this will run this script as a bash script. Right. If you have other shells installed, you can try using those other shells, right? So, um, uh, so Mac, you'd have a Z shell. Um, lots of other shells are available to you as well, right? So if you want to, you can specify different interpreters, but they will have different languages, right? Okay, uh, now, what are we gonna do with these shell scripts? So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get information into the script, right? Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can either run a command from within the script to get the information, right? So from within the script, I could run ls, for example, uh, and that would give me the listings of the directory that the script is running in, or where the script was, uh, the directory where the script was run from, right? Um, but the other way to do it is that you can feed in command line arguments to the script, right? And the script can make use of those command line arguments. So the shell provides what are called the positional parameters, uh, and they contain the strings that are on the command line, right? Now, uh, sorry, this is a little small, but I had to, it has to be this small to fit on the slide. So I'm gonna, there's this little script called positparam.sh, right? Uh, and this will let you view your command line arguments, okay? So all it does is it echoes, right? It prints out the number of arguments, so that's gonna print out the number of command line arguments. I'll explain what that symbol means in a second. Notice that we're in double quotes, right? So remember what double quotes does, right? It suppresses white space breaking, right? Which is why I can write this, right? So I can write sync double quote, new line, right? And when, I, when the shell runs, it will not uh, get rid of the new line for me, right? But what the double quotes does not do, right? Uh, it does not suppress the backslash, right? So backslash dollar sign means print out a dollar sign, right? Because I've escaped the dollar sign. So backslash dollar sign zero means print dollar sign zero equals, and now I've got dollar zero, right? So dollar zero is the first positional parameter, or I guess it's the zero per, uh, positional parameter, right? Dollar one is the, I guess the first, second? I don't know, how, we count from zero, so first, second, third, fourth, and so on, right? So dollar zero through dollar nine, those are the first nine, uh, 10, sorry, first 10 positional parameters. You can have more than 10 positional parameters if you want to, but if you do, the way you get to them is with dollar brace, right? So dollar brace 10 is the 11th positional parameter, dollar brace 12, uh, sorry, 11 would be, sorry, 11, 12, 13, 14, and so on, right? There is a limit to the number of positional parameters you can have, but it's usually quite large, okay? So I have this script uh, running uh, in my, um, uh, sorry, in my bin directory, okay? So, oh, hey, look, that's not supposed to be there. There's supposed to be something here. Okay, so if you run that, uh, it's supposed to say outputs here. I don't know why it's not here. It'll output this. So let's take a look. Mm. Uh, I just have to make sure that it's, I actually have the permissions on it. I do not. Okay, that's good. So posit params is in my bin directory, but I don't have execute permission on it. So I have to fix that before I can run it. Good. Uh, and now I can run it from anywhere, so I'll go back to my home directory and type in that. So when you type that with no command line arguments, right, um, the program says there are zero arguments, right, um, but it tells you the zeroth argument is actually the name of the shell, right? So the first, uh, well, dollar zero is always the name of the, um, of, the, of the program, right? So it's always the name of the shell, and it's always the full path name, right? Uh, now, what happens if I start to feed it command line arguments? So what if I do that, right? Now it tells you there is one command line argument, right? And its value is ABC. Right, give it another one, right? Tells you it's X, Y, Z. Notice that the other ones are empty, right? And the script and the, um, the shell does not complain that they don't exist, right? So the script runs just fine, even though I haven't given it command line arguments three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, right? 
Uh, and let's do a bunch more. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and there you go. Right. So inside your script, if you use dollar three, I can get the third uh, command line argument. Right. If I use dollar one, I get the first command line argument. Right. So not her. Right. So there's uh, if I use it with ABC. Right. Okay. Okay, so what does that dollar uh, hashtag mean, right? So that's the variable that stores the number of command line arguments, right? Not including the name of the script, right? So that does not include the name of the script, right? So if you run the script with no command line arguments, uh, dollar uh, hashtag will be equal to zero. Right? I don't know why this. I don't know why they chose the dollar sign um, uh, for everything. Um, uh, dollar sign in squiggly brackets n stores the nth command line argument. Right? Again, you're allowed to not include the squiggly brackets or the braces uh, if n is 0 through 9. As soon as it becomes bigger than 9, uh, you have to use the, the braces. Right? And $0, that's always the name of the script. OK, so how do you use this command line argument? Well, I can uh, create this little shell script called hello you that says hello to the user. Well, not the user, to, to whoever was on the command, uh, to whatever user name was entered on the command line. Uh, on the command line. Right, so $1, remember that's the first command line argument. Right, so hello you with, um, uh, how about since we just had an election, uh, Mr. Prime Minister. Right? That prints out hello, comma, Mr. Prime Minister. Right? What happens if you give it more than uh, one command line argument? Right? So now there's three, right? Because I've gotten rid of the double quotes, right? So now white space breaking comes into effect. And so you just get the first one. Right? So that's how you use your command line arguments. Uh, there's a, a little later on when we talk about arrays and things, um, you're going to see a more sophisticated use of them. OK, variables. So this is the, the most basic thing you can do in Bash, right? So when you start the program, you need variables, right? Py it's just like Python, Bash will create a variable the first time you assign a value to it. Right? So um, it's very much like Python. There's no typing, right? Uh, first time you use the variable, Bash will, assign a, will create the variable for you. Uh, the variable naming rules. Um, so they can only contain alphanumeric characters and the underscore. So these aren't the style rules. These are the actual rules. Right? Uh, the first letter must be a letter or the underscore. Okay? Uh, so you can't start a variable name with a number, for example. Uh, spaces, spaces and punctuation are not allowed in variable names. Right? So nothing surprising there. Uh, for this course, the style rules that you should use is that you should start your variables with a lowercase letter. Right? Unless, the thing you're, um, unless the variable you're creating represents a constant, right? then uppercase is fine. Multi-word names, uh, you, should, you can, if you want to, use the underscore to separate the words. Right? So I tend to use the underscore. You don't have to if you don't want to. Right. OK, um, this is the same thing, right? Hello. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, here, I'm using a variable. Right, OK. So that program, I can re instead of using the, um, the uh, what are they called again? The positional parameter directly. Right, so instead of writing hello dollar one here, I can assign the first positional parameter to the variable called name. Right, and then when I want to use uh, wherever I uh, use the word name with a dollar sign in front of it, right. So again, parameter expansion. Right, that will substitute the value of uh, the variable name. Right? Um, except when. Except when? Anybody? Anybody? OK, we'll give that a shot in a second. Let's try it. So I got, um, let's fire up hello you again. Uh, where is it? Here it is. OK, so there's the old version. I'm going to change it to name uh, equals uh, $1, one, right? I'm going to change the dollar one to dollar name. We'll save that. And then we'll, uh, we'll run that again. All right, good, still works, right? Okay, 
Now, remember, oops, sorry. Oh. Okay. So everything here is in double quotes, right? So remember what double quotes does? Double quotes suppresses white space breaking, but it does not suppress parameter expansion. Single quotes suppresses everything. So if you wrote your script like this, right, save that and run that, um, you now get hello dollar name. Right? Uh, so this is why quoting is so important in Bash. Right? You have to remember what it is that double quoting and single quoting suppress. Right? Um, if you want to use parameter substitution, uh, you probably need to use the double quotes right, in order to get the parameter substitution to still work. Okay, this was an old assignment question from last, uh, from the previous winter term. Okay, so it asked the, the assignment question asks you to make a script, right? Takes in two arguments, and it always takes in two arguments, right? Each argument is just a string, right? Uh, the script then uses the touch command to create the file's name using all possible combinations of the two words and a third word, mole. Um, yeah, for some reason, the uh, instructor had this fixation with moles. So there was a whack-a-mole was the first question. This one was, um, I forget what this one was called. Yeah, they're, they're, all the questions involved moles. I don't know. Uh, so you must use each word just once in the file name. And then have the script display the message all done when you're finished creating the file. Right? Um, so you say, OK, well, how am I going to do this? Right? Uh, so over to here. Right? Let's make a new file. Create a new script, so bang, right, the shebang, bash bin. Okay, so uh, it says it's going to take in two parameters, right? So I guess uh, we'll just call, we need uh, word one and word two, I guess, right? So I'm just going to call them, um, well, let's call it word one and word two. Word one, so that's going to be equal to dollar one. Word two will be dollar two, right? Word three is the word mole. So word three is mole, mole, right? And then he wants you to create all, all possible uh, combinations of these names, right? Uh, and he wants you to use the word touch to create the file names, right? So touch, dollar, word one, dollar, word two, uh, dollar, word three. Right, so what's that going to do? Right, so no quotes, right? So this will do parameter substitution, right? What's the value of word one? Well, the value of word one was whatever the uh, first command line argument was, right? That's the second command line argument. That's the word mole, right? So that will create the file word one, word two, mole, right? And he wants all possible combinations, so this is easy, right? Word one. Word three, word two, right? And uh, I'm not going to continue. There's another four, right, obviously, right? So then you're going to have word two, word three, word one, word two, word one, word three, whatever, right? Word three, word one, word two, word three, word two, word one, right? So, and so on, right? And then he wants you to echo uh, all done, right? Uh, if you ask me, that's pretty simple. Uh, so this was, what was he called again? I can't remember, it was some sort of mole program. Eh, I'm just gonna call it mole, right? It, I, can't, I can't remember what he asked you to make, what he asked you to save it as. Uh, so, go back into my bin directory, because I think that's where I saved it, right? It's not green, so uh, that means execute permissions probably not on. Sorry, ls minus a l, right? Yeah, execute permissions not on. Turn execute permission on, right? So u plus x mole, right? And now when you run it, mole, uh, what do we want? Uh, so gray, uh, ugly, sure, right? You get, oh, hey, uh, oh, right, that's funny. I did that uh, when I was preparing for the class too. Root bin bash. That's better, okay. Oh, I only get all done. Oh, wait, I didn't uh, right. ls, right? So there's gray mole ugly. There's ug gray ugly mole, right? And then you're going to have another four, right, when you actually complete the question. Um, yeah, that was assignment. That was question two from assignment one from last year, uh, last winter. 
right? Uh, the remaining questions were not much harder than that, surprisingly. But anyway, that's another story. Um, that's it for today. Anybody have any questions? Anybody, anybody, anybody? Great. I will see you t t tomorrow, right? Yeah, tomorrow.